Are you finding that you need more power for your camp setup? We have. We added a powered fridge to our camp gear setup and that meant we needed a bigger battery. We're gonna go over what we chose and show you how we did our battery test for five days of camping at Mount Rainier National Park. It was amazing. We'll have links in the description below for the battery and the solar panel that we purchased. Now let's go over what we use this battery for. Our biggest power draw is our set power RV 45D fridge. It takes about 60 to 80 watts, so it's a bit of a drain of the battery. We also have these LED string lights that we use. They, of course, don't take very much. And we hope now that we have all this juice, this, all this power from our battery, to add some floodlights up here on the corner, LED ones, and then over here to help light up our campsite. We normally use our rooftop tent trailer in the summer months, but hopefully now that we have this new battery source, we'll be able to do some winter camping, maybe have an electric blanket or possibly a diesel heater. These were our must have requirements for our battery purchase. We had to have a simple setup. We needed it to last two to four days without having to charge. It needed a Bluetooth monitor and a suitcase, solar suitcase. Yes, that's a weird term, I know. We went with Renogy. They have a large variety, but we went with the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium battery. Yes, it's dirty. We used it camping. And then we had the 200 watt solar suitcase. Yes, there are cheaper batteries out there, but we wanted to go with a company that has been around for a while and there's been no horror stories that we've heard about. Um, safety is a big concern since it's gonna be going right underneath where we're gonna be sleeping at. The integrated Bluetooth feature was a big selling point. We wanted to be able to check the battery status from up inside the rooftop tent. We did see a few people complaining online regarding not having enough details, but we found that we really liked the app. Right when you open the app, it shows you how much percentage of the battery you have left. If you're running it at that current setting, how much time it will remain. More details when you hit the main battery screen. It shows you the amps that it's withdrawing. It also includes the battery temperature and the cell voltage. There's quite a lot of details. So we have found that the Bluetooth has really good range. Some of the reviews on YouTube show that there are batteries out there that say that they have a low temperature protection, but then they don't actually have it. Well, this one actually does. We um, camped one time when the temperatures were really low and when we opened the app, it actually gave us a warning. Our very first trip that we took with this, oh, we'll test out the battery, see how long it lasts. It had been so cold outside that the fridge actually only turned on a few times. And the battery, when we got home, was 94%. Needless to say, we put it through another test when we went up to Mount Rainier, and it was hot. The battery has an auto balance feature, which I didn't actually know what that was until just now. Um, if you hook up another battery to it, it will know to balance out the power. I'm not sure if we will actually add another battery, but it's there if we need it. Let's talk about our solar panel. We went with the 200 watts suitcase version. There is a 100 watt one, which is cheaper, but since we are in the Pacific Northwest and we tend to camp a lot in the trees, we needed to get something that will get as much sun as possible. One of the big selling points for this was the case. It has, uh, it comes with it. It's got a wrap around zipper, which is really sturdy. And actually it seems like it has a bit of a padding. So it gives us a little bit more peace of mind when we have tossed this in the back of the truck and along with all of our stuff, we know it's gonna be protected. This suitcase is basically all, everything you need is in here. It has the cables, it has the controllers, and you just hook it up to the battery. We did end up buying the 20 foot extension so we can make sure we can grab that sun. The only downside is it is a little bit heavy. It weighs in at 36 pounds <laughs> and the size of it makes it a little bit awkward setting up by yourself. Since it is so heavy, we're not really worried about it being tipped over. Another thing, since we are in the Pacific Northwest, it is waterproof along with the controller. Greg normally sets this up, so I'm gonna try it for the first time and see just really how awkward or easy it is to do. Let's give it a try. I guess we need to lay it down. Ah. We're gonna take it out of the case. Oh, this is pretty dusty from our last trip. It was a little bit dirty on that campsite. We have some latches on the side. And there are all the cables. This is upside down. Let's flip it around. Okay. 
Now for the correct way to go. So these will unscrew to the, the angle that we need to catch the sun rays. Right now we'll just put it out. Oh, it's dusty. So as solar panels go, Greg thinks this one's pretty cool, all black and shiny. The extension cable is this super long one. It, they are not wrapped together like the cable that it actually came with, so we'll eventually need to do that. It also comes with these alligator clips, so you can attach them right to the battery. Per the instructions, it says to always hook up your battery first before plugging it into the solar panel. So that's why one of these is always unplugged before we get it hooked up. So let's hook it up to the battery. It's got an inline fuse. This is the control panel. It is on a hinge, so it actually swings. So it doesn't matter what setting the, the solar panel itself is at, you'd be able to easily read it. Now that we have the battery plugged in, we can go ahead and plug in the solar panel. Of course, we don't have any sun right now. It shows the uh, battery power, it has just four dots, but when you first time that you use this, you need to make sure you check and set it to the correct battery. This is, ours is a lithium, so we have it set to there. It has the voltage readout, and also shows the, how many amps it's pulling in, and then the last setting is how much it's actually gotten. Since it's a little cloudy right now, we are only pulling down 0.2. This is the size of a 200 watt panel, so if the sun it has moved at all, it's a bit of a process to get it moved over to catch that sun. We have also the Jackery, and this is a 60 watt one, so you can see quite the difference in size. If you've been following us for any time, you know that we have the Jackery 240, and we plan on keeping it. It has a 200 watt inverter, which has been more than we've needed, and it's so easy and portable that wherever the sun goes, we can put it up. So it has worked really well for us. We use this mostly for charging our phones and for the lights in our rooftop tent. It's so easy to charge that, you know, just throw it on the picnic table, find that sun. And if we can't find the sun, we can always use our new big battery to top it off. Before we put this setup into our new slider that we plan on building for our trailer, we put this to the test. We are camping at Mount Rainier and we're gonna be here for five days. And we're gonna be testing our uh, battery to see how well our fridge does. It's set for 37 degrees and it is currently at 35. We just got back from five miles of hiking. We're gonna check on the battery. It was, um, it's been 24 hours and it is now at 80% and we are have the setting at 35 degrees and it's the maximum setting. We just crested into the third day and the battery's at 50%. We stuck out the solar panel for, see if we can get a little bit of juice. We only have this small section, a couple hours worth of sun here. So we're on day four now, but on day three, our battery was down to 49%. So we had some glorious sun, we decided to put the solar panel out and we were able to get it back up to 60%. Actually have had to turn the temperature back up on the freezer fridge because it's freezing some of our food. We're heading into day four and our battery is now at 51%. And it's been hot. At the end of our five day battery test, we ended up at home with 25% of the battery left and that was with only two hours of solar panel charging and it was 85 degrees out or well mid to high 80s while we were camping one thing to note is that we only did use the fridge setting on this we didn't do the freezer the one time that we have done the freezer it used a huge amount of power if you like this video you might want to check out this one and if you want to learn more about us check out explore trekadventure.com and we'll see you next time